All right, welcome back for day two. We are going to be continuing to graph sine and cosine, but today what we are going to do is introduce what happens when you have a vertical shift on your uh, sine or cosine curve, and we might also include some amplitude and reflections in there as well. So just a reminder that sine and cosine both have what we call five critical points. Um, sine starts and stops on what we call the midline. Halfway is going to be another midline point. Then we will hit a maximum if we have um, a positive number out front of sine, and then we go down to a minimum. So it creates more of an S shape. Cosine also has five critical points, but if we have a positive number out front of cosine, it's going to start at a, at a maximum and end at a maximum. So one full cycle will take place from a maximum point to a maximum point. Halfway between those two maximums is a minimum point, and then the other two remaining five critical points are on what we call the midline. So the general form for trig functions, whether it's a sine or a cosine, has an amplitude out front. So that number is the number that is sort of like your coefficient. Um, we think of it as like a vertical stretch. And remember, amplitude is always positive. The next time we get together, we're going to talk about this word called frequency. So today there won't be any frequency changes. That's not something we're going to cover today. But what we are going to cover is what if I take the entire function and I either add a value or subtract a value from it. And that's what we're going to call our vertical shift. So this is the new word that we're introducing today is a vertical shift. If we are going to introduce a vertical shift, what that does is it's going to shift or create a new midline. So a lot of times, whatever this number is, whether it's positive or negative, that is going to give us the equation of your midline. So remember, your midline is always a y equals horizontal value. So if we look at example one, which we only have a few examples today, if we look at example one, what I notice is we have an amplitude of one, but then we also have a plus one at the end of the equation. And so that means instead of having y equals zero as our midline, our y equals one is going to be our new midline, that our function is going to kind of oscillate, which means to go above and below um, that point. So let's label like we normally do. Um, I'm going to be skipping lines, so up one, two, three, down one, two, three, and then same as before, our domain restriction is from 0 to 2 pi, so from 0 to 2 pi. So let's label, so skip two lines, 90, 180, 270, 360. All right, and let's refresh our memory of what a sine curve looks like. So a sine curve starts at a max, and it creates like a little valley shape. So we have five critical points. Starts at a max, ends at a max, halfway's a min, and then the other two points are on our midline. So let me switch to my red pen. Now, oh, you know what I should do before I switch to my red pen, though? is draw in my midline. So my midline is at positive one. So we will represent that with a dashed line. Let's label that y equals one. That is our midline. And so now up at my sketch, instead of that being the x-axis, which was a y equals zero, now let's consider that y equals one. So if I have my midline at y equals 1, and my very first point has an amplitude of 1 above that, then that means my first point for my cosine curve should be at 2. It ends at that same maximum point, so 1 above the midline, so the amplitude is the space from the midline to its maximum point, so it's 1 above the midline. That means halfway should be one below the midline, so halfway going one below the midline actually puts it at zero here. Then it's on the midline, and then on the midline, so I guess I never switched it back to my red pen, but I can now. I 
there we go. We graphed cosine of x, but we shifted it up one space. So it should look just like this one up here, except we took every single point and shifted it up. Our range, because we did that shifting of up one, our range is now from zero to two. Our maximum is going to be a maximum of, of two, and the way that you can get your maximum value is you can do your midline, which is your D value, plus your amplitude. So one plus one equals two. And your minimum, which clearly it goes down to zero, according to my range and the, the picture. You could also do your midline minus your amplitude. So your midline minus your amplitude would be zero. All right, let's try another one. Let's see what happens if we do something with sine. So this time, sine is going to be going from negative 2 pi to 2 pi, and we're shifting it down 2. So if we are shifting it down 2, my midline is y equals negative 2. There is no number in front of the sine, so I know my amplitude is still a 1. So let's go ahead and label. Um, let's see. 1, 2, 3. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And let's do our usual scale across the x-axis here. And this does want me to go in both directions. Notice that it asks me to go from negative 2 pi to 2 pi, so I'm also going to extend it back to the left. All right. Okay, so sine usually looks like an S. And our sign is still going to look like an S here. Um, we did not have anything reflected. It's a positive amplitude, so it's going to hit a maximum first. We still have five critical points. One, two, three, four, five. But instead of this line being at y equals zero, our, amp or our midline says y equals negative two. So if we have a, a midline at y equals negative 2 and an amplitude of 1, then if I go above it and below it by a, uh, a value of 1, this is going to be at negative 1 and this is going to be at negative 3. Um, so let's draw in our midline. That might help us because that is going to be like our new x-axis. So that's y equals negative 2. All right, sine starts on the midline. So sine is going to start on our midline. It also ends on our midline. So our last point should be on that midline. Halfway between those two points is another point on the midline. Halfway between the first two is going to be what we call our maximum point. But because we only have an amplitude of 1, we are only going to go one above our midline. So not above the x-axis, one above our midline. And then same thing for our third point here, or well, technically our fourth point. Um, it goes one below the midline. So that is what one sine curve would look like that's been shifted down to. And this wants me to extend it, remember, to the negative infinity or negative pi here. So this one, it starts and stops on the midline. Halfway is another midline point. But now as I'm going to the left to follow the curve, I would have to hit a minimum first. Then I swoop it up, hit a maximum, and then I would land on the midline. So now let's combine two things that we've learned together. We've learned amplitude changes last time we were together and this time we learned a midline shift so now let's kind of put all of it together on the next two problems so what i notice in number three is there are uh there's an amplitude of two that's the front number and your midline is up three so because my midline is up three and I have an amplitude of 2, normally I like to skip lines, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. 
But unfortunately, if I have a midline happening at positive 3 with an amplitude of 2, uh, that amplitude is going to eventually go off the grid um, and it won't fit properly. So I guess I'm not going to be able to skip my normal lines like I normally would. So I'm going to have to count every single line. So let's count this as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. This is 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. I probably don't have to keep labeling that direction because all of it's going to be up in the positives, but... Um, if you like symmetry and you want to label it equally going both ways, that's fine. Um, now, you could be labeling it this way already. Um, I choose to skip a line just to spread it out a little bit more, remember? So um, if you don't like to spread your scale out, then you don't have to ever. Um, I just, that's a personal choice of mine. All right, I have my stuff labeled. Usually the next thing I do is I will draw in my uh, midline here. So we have a y equals positive three because our function has been shifted up three. So there it is, y equals three. And I know my sine curve makes an S shape. It's positive. And it starts on the midline and ends on the midline. So let me switch to my other color. So it starts on the midline and ends on the midline. I also know halfway between the starting and the stopping points is another third point on the midline. So at least I have my base. I have my three pieces. But now, between the first two points, I hit a maximum. And I know I'm going to hit a maximum because my amplitude is positive or the coefficient is positive. But this time it's an amplitude of two. So I have to go two lines above and then two lines below to represent my sine curve here. And there you have it. That is a sine curve shifted up three and technically vertically stretched by two. It just doesn't look that way because I didn't skip my lines this time. All right, last one. I noticed a few things about this one. Um, there's a negative out front. Now remember, amplitude is still always positive. So amplitude is a one. However, my curve is going to be reflected. So if you wanna make note of that to yourself, feel free to do so. Um, the minus 2 here means it's going to be shifted down 2, so my midline is at negative 2. And I only have to graph it from 0 to 2 pi. Alright, so let's do our normal labels. Um, this one I'm going to go back to skipping lines, so positive 1, positive 2, positive 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, skip 2 lines, 90, 180, 270, 360, and we have a y-intercept, and not a y-intercept, a midline, I'm sorry, at negative 2. So that's kind of like what I consider the prep work before you start actually graphing anything. Now let's think about what a cosine normally looks like. Cosine starts at a max and ends at a max. It looks like a little valley. However, Ours, remember, is reflected. So if it's reflected or there's a negative out front, then it will not start positively. It's going to start negatively. So it's going to start and end in the negatives. Okay, that's kind of how I remember it. Um, if there's a negative, it's going to start in the negatives. If it's a positive, it's going to start in the positives. This one's going to start in the negatives or below the midline. All right, so if we are starting, oh, that's red, okay. So if we are starting below the midline, so remember our midline is at negative two with an amplitude of one, this should be starting below the midline. And by the time we're done with our graph, we should end at a minimum below the midline. Halfway between the two minimum points is a maximum point. So if my amplitude is 1, that distance is a 1 there, then this should go to a height 1 above the midline. Halfway is on it, 
halfways on it. So when you are graphing these, okay, and when you submit your homework to me or Ms. Casanzo, you should have five critical points for every single curve that you do. I always think about where does it start, where does it stop. And once you have your starting, your stopping points, think about halfway, halfway, halfway. Or if it's a sine curve, where does it start, where does it stop, halfway, halfway, halfway. Okay, everything is actually perfectly symmetrically in halves. So if you can just literally eyeball or count by boxes, you're going to be fine. All right, so minimum is negative 3. The highest it goes is negative 1. That's how you would determine your range. Feel free to take a look at number 3. We skipped that question as well. Your minimum was 1. Your maximum was 5. All right, this, is, this concludes graphing sine and cosine, including midline shifts. I'll see you guys next time.